It's the National Football League on There's no love lost between these AFC North foes. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens on Thursday night. With Chesapeake Bay gleaming in the distance, we are inside M&T Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. Tonight on this fine Thursday night, we've got a good one in store as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Welcome again, one and all. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Brandon Gordon on hand alongside Charles Davis. And yes, the storyline here, the weather. Snow and more of it expected as this game continues. So how will that impact how this one goes? Can these teams ignore the distraction and the strangeness of playing in a snow game because it actually affects the crowd as well. That big roar you get is often muffled when there's a snow game. And the second part, what's the footwear you got on? Does that fit the turf you're playing on? And how will it handle as things get a little bit slick? Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. This fielded right at the goal line. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Here come the Bengals and CD, of course, it's Joe Burrow out of LSU at quarterback. Hey, we all love a good story and what we like even more guys who can fight through adversity. Joe Burrow coming out of high school, goes to Ohio State, doesn't get a chance to start, transfers to LSU, not thought to be a top prospect, ends up the number one pick in the draft and justifies it. Tremendous play, excellent mobility, and leadership off the charts. Quickly to the air is Burrow. is incomplete not a great start dropping his first target but let's face it it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game here's second and ten now it's Burrow that one taken in by T Higgins Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Now it's Burrow. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage, too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test him early, but it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. So on fourth down, on is Brad Robbins to punt for the Bengals. It'll be a net of 40 yards there following a 43-yard punt, three-yard return, and the Ravens, they'll take over. A number eight, Lamar Jackson trotting onto the field at quarterback, ready to lead this Ravens offense. Early part of his career, defenses really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 22. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. From the 25, here's second down and seven. A toss left, Henry. 
And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they get on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. That's caught. It's Flowers. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. What I love about watching game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. A first down carry for Henry. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Jackson from the shotgun. Throw right side going to be taken in by him. Call it a gain of three on the play. And it's second down. A shotgun handoff to Mitchell. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. Those are the types of runs you say this first year running forward. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. This is exactly the cup and four out of the game. The pass well, keeping this here with another first down. Jackson, options out left. And he's got six. X. From the gun, a give to Mitchell. That's not she plays, flashy plays, as people like to call them, that of attention. But hey, so when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back five-yard gains. Didn't force the ball downfield. Picked it up on the ground. Yeah, they're getting it done. Jackson going to run. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and take loss of two there, bringing up second down. No question, he's so dangerous down here near the goal line. The safeties, they have to be involved in run support against a quarterback like this. And in turn, they're going to ask their teammates to be involved as well. Henry. Will take this into the end zone. It's a Ravens touchdown. So that a great sequence for these guys to begin the ball game. They force the punt on one end, then come right down the field and score on the other. And that's a great example of leaning on each other and building a little momentum that way. How about the defense forcing the punt? Turns it over to the offense with confidence, and they take it downfield and score. Justin Tucker for the extra point. Now, these are not going to be easy on a cold, snowy night, but this one is up and through. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. No run back here for Jones. A touchback. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. 
So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves job that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that he can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That good for 19 and a first down. Burrow looking to pass. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. It's rare that a receiver of his caliber would drop one pass, but that's now two times he's had his mitts on one and lost it. Yeah, and I don't think that they're going to lose confidence in him, though, because of the track record. Such a good player, maybe having a bad game, but I think they'll still go to him in a critical spot. Second and ten now, Burrow. This pass complete to Higgins. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 44-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Kosicki. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Second and a couple. On the option, they'll hand it to Moss. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. I haven't met a defense coordinator yet that thinks second and two is a fun situation to try and defend. Playbook is wide open for an offense partner. Nice job holding to one after that eight-yard pickup on first down. They'll try and run for this with Moss. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one. You know the defensive get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. They go play action with Burrow. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. The last three plays have resulted in gains of one, two, and now three yards here. Here's second and seven. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And that one to the right side and incomplete. Was trying to get that to his running back, Zach Moss. And it's third down. Now Burrow. They'll run the screen with Moss. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. The screen good for six, but it's not enough as it leads to a fourth down. That's a nice design there, but sometimes, though, you get so many blockers out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down and force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger game. Burrow going for it on fourth. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Bengals first down, and he'll get it by plenty. A gain of eight on fourth and one. Both sides were holding their breath there on that fourth down play, and the offense can breathe a sigh of relief. 
and both knew exactly where the first down markers were. You know the defense is trying to guard those sticks and try and keep people in front, but somehow, some way, those guys found a way to pick it up. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Second and ten. Moss on the give up the middle. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Sometimes being a linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of like being a doctor on the field. you got to make the right diagnosis. Here he correctly sends his run and shoots through to make the play backfield. On third down, Burrow. Touchdown! Charlie Jones, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Bengals are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. As a former defender, I would be angry as well. Could not get off the field. Well-executed offensive drive. No matter what the defense tried, they couldn't stop them. Evan McPherson for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This take it in at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense... They just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them, they're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Jackson to throw. A quick throw there is incomplete. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum again. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Jackson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have the Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. Again, Jackson. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Jackson now. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete.
They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and 10. Throwing is Jackson. Throw out wide is incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. Facing fourth down, Baltimore will punt. Jordan Stout out there. Charlie Jones deep for Cincinnati. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated grooves. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line. Second and a yard. Burrow on play action. And a fine chase on the right side complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. These two teams all tied after one. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals in control of the football. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Here's a give to Moss out of the shotgun. On a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. So in Raven territory now. Here's a first and 10 at the 41. Here's Burrow. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Hudson. And he'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Now a second and two. They'll go up the middle here with Moss. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Right back to Moss. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Second down, eight to go from the 28. There's Burrow setting up to throw it. Open man is Higgins. So eight yards on the completion there. And they'll be faced with a third and in inches. Signs of the field goal unit. They're going for it on fourth down. They'll try and throw forward with Burrow. 
And he is caught. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. And the drive stays in motion with a nice eight-yard pickup on fourth. I don't know about you, but I'm going to give them a little bit of credit for fortitude there. Fourth and inches, and they don't run the football. Normally, you just wedge your way through, fall full the yardage. They took a shot and put it in the air, and it paid off. Maybe they saw the defense overcommitting. A lot of confidence there, though, because even if they overcommit, you just want to make sure you get the first down. You throw an incompletion on fourth down there, they're going to second-guess you the rest of the game. 57 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Second and one from the two. On the give, this is Moss. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Just a gain of a yard, but it's going to set him up with a first and goal. Moss diving for the end zone and he is in touchdown well Brandon he just followed his nose and his nose took him to the end zone but how about the big guys up front give him at least a stalemate in order to find that space yeah the O-line won the battle in the trenches there didn't they and McPherson on for the extra point And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Hill going to think better of bringing this one out, and the drive will start at the 25. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. That 7 nothing lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. On first and 10, it's Jackson. And this one is incomplete. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. To throw is Jackson. That's caught. It's Flowers. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. They'll try the right side with Henry. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. On second down, Jackson. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. Don't do us like that. So a P.I. call going to cost him there defensively. What did you see? Well, I think it's the right call, partner, because sometimes we'll see officials kind of let them play. But by the letter of the law, that's definitely a penalty. Jackson on first down. A short throw caught by Andrews. Short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down.
Second down and a yard. Henry running right. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. And we tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit, but how about guys who are maulers? Because that's who you want in short yardage situations. And we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical, downhill running. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. And that's going to be incomplete. Oh my, you know that that's one that he'll want to have back. I mean, it did everything right. Got the linebackers commit on the play action. He just flat out missed. Second and 10 now from the 27. Now it's Jackson. Now went into the hands of Flowers. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Jackson. Walking left side, Andrews with it complete. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. They really love to go on one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover it? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. On second down, here's Henry. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop it behind the line. He lost four there, and it's third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Now this drive, they're two for two on third down conversions, but they need seven yards here. Now Jackson. Touchdown, Nelson Aguilar from 10 yards out. And the Ravens are an extra point away from drawing level. Brandon, what we just saw there were two guys who were in sync. The person delivering the ball, but especially the person running the route. Tremendous job. It results in a terrific play. And we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs. And... I think they're going to at least take a look at this. Is this a touchdown? That's the question. CD, what are they looking for here? You just need any part of the football to break the plane. You don't need the whole football. It doesn't need to go over the entire white line. It's just that front part of the white line. And if you draw an imaginary plane going straight up, that's what they need to cross. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Now Tucker to add the PAT. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it was capped by the touchdown pass to Nelson Aguilar. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. 
Charlie Jones now from his end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Zach Moss heading out to lead this offense. The Omen's effort on that last drive. Seven carries, got the touchdown as well. And the O-line probably got a little extra oxygen on the sideline in between. And deservedly so, because they were also calling for him to continue to get the ball because there's a rhythm that gets established, right? When you're running it well and the, and the back's getting the ball and he's in sync and reading blocks and the offensive line wants to continue to pound away. Haven't made an offensive lineman yet that likes to pass block more than he likes to run block. And that last drive, we saw the, the end result, didn't we? Yep, and all were rewarded with a trip to pay dirt. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, they sent the power set out there, and their job is to be man-on-man man and move people so they can run the football. But that time, too many men didn't get moved in the box defensively. They end up throwing him for a loss. On second down, it's Moss again. And nowhere for him to go again. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. From the gun on third down is Burrow. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Burrow. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Well, that's not exactly how they drew that one up, nor practiced it, because on first down, you're trying to get some yardage to set up second and third down calls. In this case, had to drop it off to his running back. But boy, they closed quickly on that one and stopped him behind the line of scrimmage. On second down, Burrow. He's going to float this one deep right side. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Well, the first two drives yielded touchdowns, so there's no reason for them to feel like that pulled back on the reins. They pushed it downfield, looking for another one right there. Didn't get it, but we know they're going to continue to be bold. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Burrow looking to pass. Throw there, going to be incomplete. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. Now here's Brad Robbins now. Five yards, this looks good as well. Here's Hill on the return. And that'll be a return of 12 following a very nice punt. And it will be first and ten as they take over. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partners, a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shit about throwing that football. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Now it's Jackson. That ball nearly intercepted. The rookie had his hands on it, but couldn't pull it in. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Here's Jackson. 
He's got his target. That's complete. Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Jackson will throw again. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Jackson. Complete. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Jackson now. Open man is Flowers. He's got it. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 33. A nice gain of 21 yards. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Throwing is Jackson. He finds Bateman over the middle. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Second down and eight. Here's Jackson to throw. He's got it complete to Aguilar. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Jackson from the shotgun. For the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That's a pretty play there. Got in at the last second, not forced the ball free, and kept them out of the end zone. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. Tucker's kick is good, and they take a 17-14 lead. So a late three there, and that'll help as they head into the break. Talk about situational football and something they've worked on since the OTAs and mini camps the previous summer. They take care of the ball, get three points, knowing they're going to get the ball to start the second half. That's the old two-for-one special to finish things off. So with three seconds remaining in the half, they will line up to kick this one away. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. It was Derrick Henry, as he normally does, making his impact felt in that first half. 
He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Not too many breaks ahead, according to the radar. More snow on the horizon as we are back underway in half number two. Hill going to sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Hey, Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it. But I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. Second half begins with a run by Henry. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Off the option, here's Henry. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> Screenplay setting it up for Mitchell. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Jackson firing quickly out wide for Bateman. So the completion good for just three. And that's going to bring up second down. They go play action with Jackson. Throw caught by Flowers. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 42. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Henry out of the pistol. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Now we're at the 41, second and nine. Jackson, option right. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. On the draw, here's Mitchell. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. So that's what that elbow in my ribs was all about. You thought they were going to throw the ball as well. Absolutely. I think everybody thought they were throwing the football. Caught him off guard. Yeah, I'm telling you, when you have the courage to make that type of a play call, 
a lot of times you actually get rewarded. And now Jackson will look to throw it. A uh, quick throw there is incomplete. Now he was looking for Rashad Bateman there. And that'll bring up second down. Now a handoff to Henry. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, so they get that one, Charles, on the right tackle. Yeah, oftentimes in that spot, you're trying to work against a defender, trying to set the edge in the running game, and you're trying to drive around and get your body twisted so that he can't get there. Sometimes your hands get too involved. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop him here on third down. To throw is Jackson. And that will be incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. How about this defense? They came up with a couple big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Right, and it bounces away no good. And that will keep this a three-point game. So distance not the issue there. He had plenty of leg to get it there. It's that darn upright getting in the way. Always gets in the way of a good time, doesn't it? Because he hit it square, too. Sometimes you can bank one in if you get it on the end of the football. No such luck there for him. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. Two sides to every coin. This is the bad side of missing the 58-yarder. Now they start at the 48. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. Now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones at a first down. Now it's Burrow. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. So much of his game is focus and concentration. And whenever I see guys running the in route, I know that in the back of their mind, they're always wondering who's lurking inside that might put a big hit on them as they try and catch the ball. Second and 10 now, Burrow. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Mike Kosicki. And it's third down. Again, it's Burrow. That is caught. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That'll give him 60 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Now a give running left with Marks. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Burrow throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. A 
I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. That's to Chase. He's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Jamar Chase, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Bengals have retaken a third-quarter lead. McPherson now for the extra point. It's up and good to make it 21-17. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was Jamar Chase who finished it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And Hill will opt for the touchback. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Jackson's throw complete there to Bateman. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. And Bateman, and he'll go in motion right here. Now Jackson taps this forward, jet sweep. And he's just going to run right into that big old defensive end. And that play going nowhere. This defense not fooled one bit on that touch pass. And this has become one of those kind of in vogue plays. You know, kind of like the shuffle pass was a few years ago. This one never got off the ground, but you understand why a lot of teams are running it. These wide receivers, a lot of them, they run like running backs with the ball in their hands. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. But they're certainly being aggressive here. It's like being a, a sprinter in a 100-meter dash, exploding out of the blocks, trying to push the ball downfield. Guaranteed this defense better be on their toes. They're going to be tested all game. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Here's Jones on the return. 43 yards on the punt, seven yard return, and the Bengals take over first and 10. Jamar Chase hoping to be at center stage yet again as the offense returns to the field. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good, but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once. But boy, he can explode at any moment. Yeah, and when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, you do. You get, you, hungry. you get greedy in a good way. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. Now Burrow. He'll find Jones again, complete. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. 
That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. It'll be a gain of five, and that will bring up second down. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Now Burrow to throw on second down. Open man is Chase complete. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll get this down to the 47-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. To the air again, Burrow. Jones has it. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now it's Burrow. Now a short one to Gesicki. Will go down as a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender, but the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. Second down and four. They'll run out of the gun with Moss. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Four yards the pick up, first down. I think there's a fatigue factor that's kicking in defensively. You know the will is still strong, but I think the offense is starting to bend it just a little bit, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. It's looked that way. We'll see if they can continue this already strong drive. First down, they stay with Moss on the ground. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. After another really nice run, this is where a defense coordinator earns his money. His guys have been on the field a long time, so he's got to decide what he wants to do to try and slow them down. Is he going to substitute some players in, get some fresh guys, or is he just going to try to attack and try and find a way to take the ball away from them? And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. Charlie Jones. His second touchdown of the night. And the Bengals will add on to their lead here in the final minute of the third. Those are the touchdowns that aren't just scored on Sundays or on Monday night. Those are the ones that are scored during the week because they had that preparation in a great route run. Oh, I love that observation because you don't just roll out on game day and say, okay, go run this route and let's get it done. That means exactly what you said. The practice had to occur beforehand, which led to the timing, which led to the touchdown. You always worry about the plant foot in the snow, but no problems there. And that pushes the lead up to 11. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Hill going to think better of bringing this one out, and the drive will start at the 25. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. The last series form, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Jackson and the Ravens come up now, first and 10, at their own 25-yard line. He'll start with a give to Henry. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Shut him off the side. 
One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Ravens with possession of the football, but trailing on the big board as we get set for the fourth. From the gun, it's Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. In motion left, Flowers. Now Jackson taps his forward jet sweep. Oh, and that is well read defensively. A great job of setting the edge, and that little touch pass is going to turn into a loss. Well, I think the hope is, you know, with a touch pass like that, they, maybe you catch the defense off guard, but they were all over that one. And it is the kind of play that works better against certain defenses, and this clearly was the wrong one to run into. Really nice job getting him down behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And they're going to face a third down. Again, Jackson. And he'll be taken down. Bengal pressure. There's Sam Hubbard that time in there to bring him to the ground. Well, he was really focused downfield, but there was really no viable options. The coverage was too good. And the defense really quickened the tempo of that play with their pass rush because there was nowhere for him to go with the football. The only place he ended up, down on the ground. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. The Bengals getting set to go. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. On the handoff, it's Moss. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. Five yards, now it's third and five. They go play action with Burrow. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That one goes for 36 yards. And this is seemingly how it's been all game long. This defense has been just a step too slow. And here they're burned again. Another big play. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. They'll run here with Moss. And he's swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Tackle there by Michael Pierce. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. They'll run a draw now with Moss. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. No gain that time, but it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. 
And the Bengals on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This is third and 11. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he's gonna be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 17 yard line. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. Brandon, there have been some memorable snow games for championships in the NFL. 1948, Philadelphia Eagles, Chicago Cardinals. Well, the most famous one in my lifetime, I think, is got to be 01, right? Raiders, Patriots, to send the uh, Patriots to the to Super to, Bowl, you the, to tuck to the tuck roll. roll, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one people remember. But I also know this in Miami, the infamous one, the snowplow game in New England when they went out there and, and the Patriots had a guy come out and clear a spot on the field for their field goal kicker to kick the game winner. Was that 82? That was 82, and the Dolphins fans will never forget it. Well, we're not seeing one of those famous games here, but it's fun to be in the snow nonetheless. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Moss on the give up the middle. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Now this drive, they're two for two on third down conversions, but they need seven yards here. They'll go again here with Moss. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. Evan McPherson out for the Bengal field goal from 28 yards out. McPherson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that may be not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist, but time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 23. They'll try and start this drive in the air. A short throw caught by Andrews. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think the second one to even matter. Now Jackson on second down. That to the right sideline falls incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver. And it results in an incomplete pass. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Throwing is Jackson. And that's incomplete. Yeah, offenses always try to be smart about when they're trying to dial up a screen to the running back because they understand you can only go to the well so many times in the game without the defense starting to anticipate the call. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Here we go. It's Jackson on fourth down. He's got it complete to Aguilar. 
And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. A first down carry for Henry. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Inside handoff, Henry. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. The quick feet by Jackson. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. And now they're in the hurry up. On first and 10, it's Jackson. His throw incomplete. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. To throw is Jackson. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. John Harbaugh not afraid to go for it this time. Doesn't work out. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. On first down, they'll start out with Moss. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time. And that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. On second down, it's Moss again. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. 
And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Has to. You said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. That is brought down short. Two yards there, needed four. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down by two touchdowns, a minute 50 to play. Field goals, useless at this point. They need two touchdowns and they need them in short order. Here's Jackson, connecting with Andrews. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. This offense has had its troubles moving the ball all night. So now you get in this situation, hard to imagine that suddenly they're going to start clicking and moving the ball downfield. Another try, second and 10 now. Jackson. And Jackson cannot get away, and he'll go down. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. A tall task ahead of him here, needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. Jackson. Now the ball comes loose, and the Bengals grab it. Well, that drive wasn't a case of wanting to put points on the board. It was needing they to, had to having had to, to, and they didn't get it done. Yeah, didn't get it done, and now you look at the situation and the point differential, two scores, pretty much game, set, match. How about the takeaway, though, huh? How about those defensive guys? Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. The Bengals go down to a knee in the victory formation. Burrow down to a knee, and that should be the final act of this one. 
Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. Well, that second half, Charles, a little bit different from the first. Not only did we have the lead change after intermission, but they were able to pitch the shutout in the second half and get an impressive victory. And what's the old expression? That's not quite how I saw it playing out in my head. You know they didn't expect this at all. As you mentioned, went into the half with the lead. Losing the game is one thing. Getting shut out in the second half, that's a surprise. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. From Baltimore, good night, everybody.